Hello and welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. I've been asked many times how I make my casting boxes. So if I'm doing a cast in a box or, or a shape, or if I'm making a silicon mould, how I make the casting boxes. And I mean the casting box is similar to this. So I'm going to be making a mould of this crystal once the uh, <laughs> silicon arrives. So this video is just a short video really to show you how to do it. And all you're actually going to need for this is some wide sellotape like this, a metal ruler, which is best because if not, what you can do is cut the plastic ones, and a sheet of one millimetre PVC. And this, all these items are really, really cheap. Certainly the PVC is really, really cheap. And it isn't actually that colour at all. It comes with a protective film on it that you can just pull off if you can get hold of it like so all right so i always use a cutting mat and i will put a link to all these items in the description of this video and that will be my amazon affiliate links it won't cost you any more if you use those but it does uh, really helped me. It pays me a bit of commission and allows me to buy my stock to keep making these videos. So what I always do is I never make a box bigger than I actually need it if I'm making a casting with silicon because I don't want to overuse the silicon. But when I'm making maybe a whole diorama or a casting in a box, then I make sure I make it to the size that I want. So the box that I want to make today is 10 centimeters which is almost four inches so i might as well use the marks on here and four inches square so 10 inch 10 centimeters square one two three four there we go and all i need to do is draw my lines down this I need to take that bit out and in this stuff cuts really really easily and you're not expecting it to cut all the way through. You just want to make a deepish score line on here like this with your X-Acto knife. So, and I keep that quite close to the ruler's edge and that's why I use a metal ruler. And as you can see, that hasn't cut all the way through, but with the one centimeter square, you can just snap it off. So that's through there. And now we're going to cut that line as well. And this will give us two bases. Okay. There we go. That snapped nice and cleanly. So that's now given us two bases. But the actual one that we want is this one because this is the one that's square. That one's slightly longer. Now... The other thing to remember is, if you're making a silicon mould, you need to make sure that it goes above at least a centimetre above the top, so it gives it some stability. But this box, I want to make a 10 centimetre square box, so I might as well use this piece up that I've got here. So I'll put this on here, like so. And I know that other one was four centimetres, so that's four centimetres high. And I need to cut off that bit there to make this four centimetres as well. So I'm just going to score that quite hard and firm down there. And then just break this off or bend it back like so. If you're concerned about it snapping and breaking off and then it will just come off if it doesn't come off then you can just run your knife down there again but this will come off okay so there's one side and i'm going to need five of these squares because obviously you've got a bottom and four sides so let's get the next one done my advice would be as well is to, once you've cut all your pieces, to remove any of the alcohol ink or permanent marker pen that you've got on there because you don't want that transferring to your silicon or to your resin if you're going to use it as a mould pot. 
and all I use is a piece of paper towel and some 99% alcohol. So the next thing to do is we need to stick these together to make a box and my advice to you would be to pre-cut your tape as well because I think that really does help. So what I do is I pre-cut my tape and then I lay that piece on the tape and then I will lay another piece on the tape. Any rough edges like that I always try and keep to the top leaving just a slight gap of about a millimeter there so that actually when you fold that up you can fold that onto there like that and I will go around and I will do all those sides like that lining them up making sure that they're in line as well. So I'll carry on with that and then we'll come back once I've put all those bits on. So they're all attached now. I'm just going to give that a bit of a push down and then what that means is you can now lift these up and make really a rough bit of your box. And again I would have your tape pre-cut here to ensure that uh, you don't have to keep fumbling around because really what you want to be doing now is again you want to be lifting that onto that plastic and getting a closer angle there as you possibly can and so what I do is I put a bit of tape on there like that I load that up next to it where I want it and then I wrap that tape around it okay so I'll show you that one more time it's fairly simple so and I fiddled about one of these for a long time, messing about, the sides kept collapsing. And then I worked out this little technique. Oh, and it just makes life so much simpler. So again, line it up. Like that. And then just wrap that tape round. And then you've got your last side, and I should have a piece of tape left, I do. I just pop that up there, like so. Get those cut sides together as quickly as I can. There's my next, last, very last piece of tape. And I will pop that on there like so. And now you've got what I would consider to be a box. Now, there's two ways you can deal with this going forward you can either use a hot glue gun and go down all these joints and around the bottom to make sure there's no leakage or you can do it with tape now I use tape because I find that actually tape is easier and less messy so I will pop that down like that I will line that up with the top edge and pop that down and it doesn't matter if it goes over it a little bit and then I just roll this round and ensure those edges are completely sealed and that way anything that you're putting in here can't come out And I will go round it, overlapping, to ensure that all those edges are sealed. And I will push it down like so as well. Now, the next thing I'll do is, before I do the middle one, is I will go round the bottom. And how I do the bottom is I will go so it's halfway up, like so, to the bottom. It's like wrapping a present, really. Okay, and I'll go around there, I'll go around there, and I always overlap the tape, because tape is really inexpensive, and then you've got that like that, so what, how I will deal with that is I will push that down 
like so at both ends and then I will fold that over which sticks it down completely <laughs> yeah my doggy's playing it's a lovely day out here and I'll just go over those and make sure that they're all down nicely and that they're sealing those corners and what we've got left now is that middle portion to ensure that we seal off. And again, I literally make sure that I'm overlapping those two middle portions to ensure again that there's no leakage. I'll give it an extra once a half a turn so it overlaps the actual middle bit of tape, fold that down and then I just go round all the corners ensuring that they are nicely sealed like so. I'll go round all the bottom ones to make sure that they're nicely sealed and now unlike with the hot glue gun because it's hard to get a level base that is now sitting still very level level flat and um, it's easy to cast and use so you can now use that box for anything from a large silicon mold casting i would always spray some release uh, silicon release spray in there or you can cast a nice uh, square of resin in there with things in it for a diorama and again, I would always spray it. You don't really need to. It does. It will still come off. I will spray a little bit of seal, uh, uh, release spray in there as well. So there we go. There's a nice, neat box that's square. And you can make these any shape and size that you want, as I showed you here. And I've made them um, like this sort of shape. If I want to do something round, similar to what I did when I cast the egg, then I used acetate because that was quite secure and firm there. But... This is going to have resin in it, and I want to make sure that that's nicely um, positioned. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please go to the description where you'll find all the links to all the materials that I've used. And leave a comment and any questions, and I will get back to you. Join my Facebook group, How to Resin with Steve McDonald. It's growing really nicely now, and it gets lots of tips and tricks in there. Most of all, enjoy your resin. Be safe. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video as much as you can to help my channel grow. Bye.